We are now in module 12, which is called Simplifying Complex Fractions. So we have to learn a new vocabulary word today. What is a complex fraction in math? We go back to arithmetic. So if you all take a look at your class notes, let's go over this definition. If you look here, I have a complex fraction, 4 fifths over 7 tenths. The reason why that's complex is because there's a fraction in the numerator and there's a fraction in the denominator. And that is unacceptable as an answer. From arithmetic, when you write a fraction, you should only have a whole number in the numerator and a whole number in the denominator. So by having 4 fifths and 7 tenths, which are fractions, this is called complex. So we're going to have to work this out. Now when I say work it out, I mean do an operation. And if you look between the 4 fifths and the 7 tenths is the fraction bar, which means division. So 4 fifths over 7 tenths really means 4 fifths divided by 7 tenths. So when we see complex fractions, we are just talking about division. So if we look at our notes at example 1, we have an algebraic one. We have 5x over 6y cubed divided by negative 2x over 3y. So we're going to learn that this is a complex fraction. It cannot be left like that. So we have to do the operation of division. So this bar means to do division. So we need to rewrite this. So this is 5x over 6y cubed divided by negative 2x over 3y. That's all we're learning, is that this is called a complex fraction. It's a fraction over a fraction, and it means to do division. Just write in the order, numerator divided by denominator. Now we're back to reviewing. Dividing fractions easy as pi, flip the second and multiply. We never divide fractions. Instead, we do the opposite operation, which is multiplication. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal or multiplicative inverse. That's a fancy way to say flip the fraction. So we flip it, the 3y is going to go to the numerator, the 2x is going to go to the denominator. Now the problem is going to be the negative sign. Most people are going to say, well, the negative sign goes to the denominator. Yes, it does, but what do you do with negatives in the denominator? You float them back to the top. So when you do a reciprocal, the negative sign is going to stay where it is. It's just flipping the location of the numerator and the denominator. Now we're back to our song from the beginning of this chapter. Multiplying fractions is no problem, top times top, bottom times bottom. Before you start to multiply, factor first, then divide. Well, there's no factoring here. This is all connected by multiplication. These are all monomials, so we could divide. I could divide 3 into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice. I could divide x and x. Something divided by itself is 1. I could put the 1's there, but 5 times 1 is going to stay 5, so we usually don't put the 1's. We understood. I could divide y into y cubed, and that leave me y squared, so that y is gone. That's left with y squared. So now that I did all my dividing, let's see what's left to multiply. There's a 5, and there's a negative 1, which means the numerator is negative 5. In the denominator, there's 2y squared times 2, which is 4y squared. So to work a complex fraction is just doing division. And we all know division is just repeated multiplication. Now, let's look at another example in your notes. That's a little bit more complicated. Let's look at example 2. That knot just has two fractions, that has four fractions. So we got to go back to arithmetic. How would you work that? So let's go up to the board and discuss this for a minute. If I took out the fractions and I wrote 3 minus 7 over 3 minus 6, and I asked the student in fourth or fifth grade to work that out, they would see division, but they would also see subtraction. So they would say, oh, we got to put these together first before we can divide. So they would do 3 minus 7, negative 4, 3 minus 6, 
negative 3, and then they would do their division. And we all know 4 and 3 do not divide nicely, but a negative over a negative is a positive. Well, the same thing is true with example 2. You cannot do the division, and first you get one fraction in the numerator and one fraction in the denominator. So the rule of thumb is, yes, before you ever do division, there can only be one term. One fraction in the numerator, one fraction in the denominator, and then you would do your division. So let's look at the algebraic one. Let's look at example three, because that's going to be the toughest one we have. I love this example, because by doing this example, we are going to review all of chapter 14. This one example reviews everything you should know about fractions. So let's work this one out slowly. All right, I have 1 third plus 1 over x divided by 1 half minus 1 over x. So you heard operations. You heard addition, subtraction, and division. The problem is you can't divide first. There has to be one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. So even though we follow the rules of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we learned in fraction world, before you could divide, there's got to be one term up here and one term up here. So we're going to have to add first. Well, wait a minute. To add means things have to be alike. In fraction world, you need to have the same denominator. So what is the LCD of 3 and x? 3 is in lowest terms. x is in lowest terms. So the LCD would be 3 times x, which is 3x. If you change the denominator, you got to change the what? The numerator. So now we're going to make our equivalent fractions. How does a 3 become a 3x? You multiplied by x. So 1 times x is x. How does an x become a 3x? You multiplied by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Now, the whole purpose of going through making a common denominator is so that you can add these fractions together. So you write the bottom. You collect the top. Can you add the letter x to the number 3? No, they're not alike. From chapter 12, they're not like terms. So we just write them in order, x plus 3. Now I know what you're thinking. You didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You went from having two separate fractions, two fraction bars, to having one fraction, one fraction bar. And that's the rule. You've got to have one fraction in the numerator and one fraction in the denominator to divide. So now we're going to look at the denominator. We've got the same problem. This says subtract. We've discussed this. Subtract means to add the opposite. Get the negative sign where it belongs in the numerator. Adding means we need, a, need an LCD. 2 is prime, x is prime, so the LCD has got to be 2x. Again, if you change the denominator, you got to change the numerator. Has a 2 become a 2x? You multiply by x. So 1 times x is x. How does an x become a 2x? You multiply by 2. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now you follow the process. You write the bottom, 2x. Again, you collect the top. Can you take an x and add to it a negative 2? No, you cannot. But we've already discussed this. We never write x plus negative 2. You never see a term with two signs in front of it. What kind of 2 is that? Negative. Again, you, what you did is you went from having two separate fractions to having one fraction. There's only one bar. Now that you have one fraction in the numerator, one fraction in the denominator, now we can do division. So what's the rule? Dividing fractions easy as pi, flip the second, and multiply. So the first fraction stays x plus 3 over 3x. You change division into multiplication by doing the reciprocal the multiplicative inverse, which would be 2x over x minus 2. Now we're back to multiplying fractions is no problem, top times top, bottom times bottom. Before you start to multiply, factor first, then divide. So I'm going to ask you, can x plus 3 factor? Nope. No GCF, not a difference of perfect squares, not a trinomial. It's got to stay together. We put it in parentheses. That's already connected by multiplication. That's already connected by multiplication. Can x minus 2 factor? No. No GCF, no difference of perfect squares, no trinomial. So nothing will factor. 
Can anything divide? Sure can. This x can divide with this x because it's connected by multiplication. So now what are you left with in the numerator? You're left with x plus 3, and you're left with 2. And we all know that 2 goes in front. And in the denominator, you're left with 3 times x minus 2. Now, that's an acceptable answer. However, sometimes they want your answers simplified, worked all the way. So I can accept this, or I could say, all right, work it out. We all know how to multiply. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. That would be in the numerator, 2x plus 6. And the denominator, 2 times, th I mean, 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So it's very important that you pay attention. Okay? This one complex fraction reviewed the whole chapter order of operations of fractions. Because to work this complex fraction, you had to add and subtract. So you had to know adding meaning needed in the LCD. You had to know subtract meant add the opposite. You had to know how to make equivalent fractions. Then you had to realize this bar means division. Division gets changed into multiplication. Then you had to learn to multiply. You want to reduce first, which is factoring, dividing, to get your answer in lowest terms. So when you get to this section, just realize you're using all the skills from chapter 12, 13, and 14. And now we're done with rational expressions. Okay, catch you in the next video. Thank you.